Okay, I now have some problems for you to try to see how you do on this. So in a moment I'll have you press pause and then I'll have you see how you do solving these problems. So these are going to be using those basic rules that we learned. And so go ahead and give those a try when you're done. You can start the video back up and see how you did. Okay, so let's see how you did here. This first problem says data collected show that 89 cards had defective struts, 286 cards did not. If one of the cards is randomly selected, what's the probability that it has defective struts? So for this one, I might say probability that it's this it has defective struts. And so what I need to know is that bottom number, right? And the point of this is you have to add these two together to get the total number of outcomes, okay? Uh, so 89 plus uh, 286, I get 375, and that's my bottom number. Okay, and then how many of those are defective? 89 of them. So I would do 89 divided by 375. And I get approximately 0.2373. If I round to four decimal places. Okay, and so that would be the first one. You got to add them together to get the total number on bottom. And then however many are in the event, you want to find the probability of on top. Okay, well this problem here is an and and an or problem. So I'm going to do the and one first. Usually, I think of the and ones are usually a little bit simpler. So in this case, it's saying what's the probability of getting a heart and a face card and then what's the probability of getting a heart or a face card right okay so a heart and a face card Okay, so the total number of outcomes in both of these is 52 because there's 52 cards in a deck. And so what we need to know here for this first one is how many cards, I'm going to just select one, how many of those are both a heart and a face card? And the answer to that is there's three. Those three cards would be the Jack of Hearts, the Queen of Hearts, and the King of Hearts. So three out of the 52 are both a heart and a face card. And I get like, this is approximately 0 0.0577 if I round to four decimal places. So now what about a heart or a face card? Okay, so now what I like to do here, so I like to put the total number of hearts, 13, and the total number of face cards is 12, okay? And so I'm not gonna just add those and put 25 over here. And the reason is that some of these hearts are face cards and some of these face cards are hearts. So there's some overlap that some of them are getting counted twice. So maybe what I could do is I could take the 13 face cards, right? Or even, uh, yeah, I, well, I'll do it this way. I'll show you both ways. I could take the 13 face cards and then there's going to be nine more, I'm sorry, I could take the 13 hearts, and then there's going to be nine more face cards that are not hearts. Three of them are hearts, so nine of them are not hearts. So you could do the 13 plus the nine, and you would get 22 face cards. Or what you could do, maybe what's easier, is take the 12 face cards and then the 10 number cards, the 10 hearts that are not face cards and they add together again 10 plus 12 is 22 either way okay and then I get 22 divided by 52 and I get approximately 0 0.4231 if I round to four decimal places okay so now here's a, a problem 
and this one's going to use the complement rule. So notice there's, I'm told that the probability of catching a disease here, catching disease, okay, I'm told that it's 0 0.0781, okay, small chance of catching the disease, and I want to know the probability of not catching the disease, okay. So notice I don't have like the total number of outcomes, the number of outcomes in the event. So I'm not going to use the standard rule here. I'm going to use the complement rule because I want to find the complement of the event that I know. So I'm going to take 1 minus the catching the disease and that's going to give me the probability of not catching it. Okay, 1 minus 0 0.0781 and I get 0.9219 and that would be the probability of not catching the disease. Okay, um, And so that's the complement rule. You can actually think of the complement rule as being the, the first formula that you've learned. Um, not E equals 1 minus the probability of E. So like I said that there's formulas where you can plug in probabilities and calculate other probabilities. This is the simplest formula. This is the first one, first formula like that that you've learned. Okay, and so, um, and it's a very simple one. So you can put in this probability and you'll get out another probability. Okay, and, and, and in this case, you, these, when you have formulas like this, you're always putting in the probability in decimal form. Okay, not in a percentage form. So it's kind of like when you're doing a simple interest problem, you know, you put in the interest rate as a decimal into the formula, not as a percent. Um, okay, so now let's do the last one here. I'll do it on the back. So I got a frequency distribution. So I take a survey of households and they either have zero vehicles, one, two, three, four, five, all and up to six. Very similar to my TV one, I guess. And I want to know these, I want to find these probabilities. So, um, so this is number four. So the first one is what's the probability um, that there's two vehicles? Okay, so what do I have to do to get the total number of outcomes? Okay, so it's like how many households are in the hat, right? So you got to add up these frequencies, and when you add those up, you get, I think you get 50, let me make sure, 3 plus 12 plus 21 plus 7 plus 5 plus 1. Ah, I got, I did not get 50, I got 49. Um, so I guess the, prob the, the, the bottom here is 49. That's okay. Had a sneaky suspicion. I meant for it to be 50. Had a sneaky suspicion it wasn't. Okay, but that's okay. That's, it is what it is. We can still find the probability. Um, so the probability that there are two vehicles, I'm going to take 21. So out of all these households, 21 of them had two vehicles. So 21 over 49. So 21, oops, 21 divided by 49. And I get like 0.4286, uh, if I round to four decimal places. Okay, so now what about finding the probability um, that there's five vehicles. Well, out of the 49, none of them have five vehicles. Zero. So the probability is zero. It's impossible. Not going to find a house like that. That's actually like the TV one too, isn't it? Okay. Um, what about probability of no vehicles? What do you do here? Well, there's a zero here. So this would be households. There's three households that have no vehicles. So out of the 49, there's three of them that have no vehicles. Okay, so, 
So 3 divided by 49. And I get like 0 0.0612. Okay, very good. And then finally, at least three vehicles. How many have at least, at least three vehicles? So this is the number of vehicles that the households have is greater than or equal to three. So I'm gonna add the seven, the five, zero, and the one together. I get 13, 13 out of the 13 out of the 49 have at least three vehicles. And I get approximately 0.2653 have at least, at least three vehicles. So there you go. Those are some basic probability rules and calculating some basic probabilities. So in the next set of videos, we're going to learn a few more slightly advanced techniques. Um, but they're still, they're not too bad. They're still fairly basic. But they allow you to find some other kind of more complicated probabilities.